So the president of the John Jay College, uh, like I mentioned in the first part one, um, at the end of his letter uh, describing how the school has taken on uh, this task of looking at the data for the Catholic Church of uh, the abuse allegations. Where we left off was the, uh, he says that um, the remarkable 98 response, 98% response rate, which we obtained from the diocese, is virtually unheard of in its social science research. To me, that's pretty impressive too, because uh, reports like this, you know, it's, it's, I have a hard time kind of understanding that the diocese fully cooperated with the data that the data that they handed over because what happens is when a report comes out like this then what it does is get and then when people start to talk about it then it opens the church up for more lawsuits because you know it sparks kind of a new controversy or it kind of sparks that in our mind of oh well well this happened to me and this is why it happened and now that I understand it more now that I'm now I'm going to sue the church kind of thing um, but so it's, it's interesting that 98% of dioceses actually cooperated. I'm not sure exactly how much of that data they handed over or, um, I, I mean, I guess that's what this report, um, shows. So hopefully we'll see what exactly they handed over and how, um, how accurate it is. So, uh, just continuing with his letter here, the national review board, uh, and who's, uh, you know, lay, mem lay members uh, worked endlessly, um, you know, on these on this data. Uh, Kathleen Kathleen McCh McChesney, um, executive director, uh, her staff who repeatedly walked the extra mile to help uh, complete our assignment. Uh, I'd be interested to talk to her. She's probably an expert on this. Uh, and so um, hopefully maybe in the future videos we can uh, talk to her. Um, I would remiss if I did not acknowledge the staff at the John Jay College who facilitated the work and doing the study. Um, so basically he's just thanking everybody. And um, uh, the, don the data which John Jay College collected will provide the basis for the development of hypothesis and analysis and will explain the causes of the distressing sexual abuse phenomenon pre presented in this report. Um, okay, so let's start with the summary here. The study of sexual abuse of minors by Catholic priests and deacons resulting in the report authorized and paid for by the USCCB, uh, which is known as the Charter for Protection of Children and Young People, uh, also known as the Dallas Charter. The Charter called for because it was, you know, done in Dallas when they were meeting. The Charter called for many responses to this victimization of minors within the Catholic Church. Um, uh, the Charter provided the creation of a lay body. This is, the, this is something that um, is interesting. A National Review Board. So now, um, a National Review Board of lay people, uh, which means when they do the study, it will be Nobody will have an interest in manipulating it. So say if you have a lay board of, of priests, obviously um, the priests work for the bishops. The priests themselves um, don't want to look bad. So if the, if the review board was, if the national review board was made up of priests, that would give uh, a not an objective look at the numbers and the data and et cetera. If you have a group of lay people on the National Review Board, which was mandated uh, to the study, um, you get a more objective look at it. So the different dioceses in, uh, across the United States now have these review boards uh, for the individual. This is a National Review Board for this study, but uh, in the United States now, the different dioceses have their own review boards, uh, which is made up of uh, lay people. Uh, the, the, the requirement, I think, for review boards are that they have to be Catholic and they have to be, uh, you know, I think they're, most of them are 
made up of like uh, business professionals. I know of some review boards that don't have Catholics on them, which is interesting, but, um, and maybe like a couple priests. Whereas I think in the past, uh, the review boards were made up of all priests. So if you have a priest in the past that has been um, abusing and the priest has uh, connections to those priests, maybe they're their friends, maybe they went to school together, maybe they are, um, maybe they get a lot of, maybe they get money from these priests. Uh, however they're connected to the priests, the review boards back in the day, if they had them, um, were made up of all priests. Uh, whereas nowadays they're made up of lay people so that proper uh, justice can be done. So uh, according to the board approached, uh, the board approached John Jay, Criminal College, uh, John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Uh, the college assembled a team of researchers uh, especially those in forensic psychology, criminology, and human behavior, uh, working with the board, uh, formulated a method methodologic methodology to address the study mandate. Uh, data collection commenced in March of 2003 and ended in 2004. Uh, the information contained in this report is based upon surveys provided by 195 dioceses. Huh representing 98% of uh, all diocesan priests in the United States and 140 religious communities, representing approximately 60% of religious communities and 80% of all religious priests. Uh, the, mandated, the mandate for the study was to examine the number and nature of allegations, sexual abuse uh, with minors under the age of 18, between 1950 and, and 2002. Collection of the information about the alleged abusers uh, included official status of the church, their age, the number of victims, uh, and the response by the church and legal authorities, um, and other small you know, characteristics. Uh, collection of information about the characteristics of also the alleged victims. Um, the nature of their relationship to their abuser. This is important too. Uh, the nature of the abuse and the time frame in which these allegations uh, are reported. Uh, accumulation of information about the financial impact of the abuse on the church. Uh, the three surveys provide the data for this study, a profile of each diocese uh, providing about characteristics of the diocese, including the region, size, uh, total number of allegations, uh, a survey of the church records relating to individual priests, uh, survey of church records relating to the alleged victims of abuse of nature. Based on the inquiries and communications that we receive from the diocese and religious communities, it is their impression despite the complexity of the surveys and the difficulties of identifying relevant church records, this data reflects a conscientious, 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 conscientious and good faith effort to provide exhaustive and reliable information regarding allegations of abuse made to church authorities. Uh, due to the sensitive nature of the abuse allegations, which form the core of this report. Uh, many steps were taken to assure, assure the anonymity of the alleged victims and priests who were the subjects of the study. So in the study, uh, used a double blind procedure. That's interesting. In which all the reports were sent first to Ernst & Young, an accounting firm, where they stripped all the information that they could use to identify the area from which they were sent. Uh, Ernst & Young, they sent then sent the unopened envelopes containing survey responses to the John Jay researchers. The data set is thus stripped of all identifying information that may be linked to an individual diocese, religious community, priest, or victim. Okay, so that's good because um, there's no information about which diocese they came from, which religious order, and hence the 98% uh, up here, where it says that 98% of dioceses and religious orders within the United States uh, complied to 
the John Jay report because there was no way that the John Jay College could have any information about it was just all pure data without any information of the priests or the abusers. Uh, very objective. I like that. So double double blind procedure. That's a good one. I like that. Um, the prevalence. The priest surveys asks for birthdays and initial. See, this is this will be important uh, later too. Uh, the priest surveys ask for birth dates and the initials of the accused priest. Um, to determine if the priest had allegations in multiple dioceses or religious com communities uh, to maintain anonymity, anonymity, this information was encrypted in a unique identifying number. Okay. Uh, and birthdays and initials were then discarded. Okay. So they somehow um, combined their initials with their birthdays and created a unique number for them to um, identify a priest. So we detected 310 matching encrypted numbers accounting for 143 priests with allegations in more than one diocese or religious community. 3% of the total number of priests with allegations. When we removed the replicated files of priests who had allegations in more than one place, we received allegations of sexual abuse against the total of 4,392 priests that were not withdrawn or known to be, to be false in the period of 1950 to 2002. The total number of priests with allegations of abuse in our survey is 4,392. So the total number of priests in this report, 4,392. The percentage of all priests with allegations of sexual abuse is difficult to derive because there is no definitive number of priests who were active between the, the years of 1950 and 2002. We used two sets of numbers to estimate the total number of active priests and then calculated the percentage against whom allegations were made. We asked each diocese and community for their total number of active priests in this time period adding up all the responses in between the, the years of 1950 and 2002, there were over 100,000, uh, 109,000 priests reported by the diocese and religious communities to have served in church ministry. Uh, you, out of that, during that time period from 1950 to 2002, uh, 4% of all active priests had allegations of abuse. Okay. So the Center of Applied Research reported that 94,000 priests for the period of from 1960 to, to, to 2002 uh, was 4.3. Okay. So pretty accurate. Another, uh, another Center of Applied Research did a similar um, study and concluded that that, in fact, number is correct. So the diocese actually did hand over all information uh, regarding uh, abuse by their priests, by their clergy. If we examine the differences between the diocesan and religious priests, then our numbers result in a total of 4.3 of diocesan priests with allegations of abuse and 2.5 of religious priests with allegations of abuse. Okay, our analysis. Okay, so our analysis revealed that little variability in the rates of alleged abuse across regions of the Catholic Church in the United States. The range was from three to six percent of priests. And I will stop part two here, and we will continue on in the next video.